Chefs! Welcome back to my classroom and this is the lesson 4 of our Cook 005 class. This week, we are going to talk about potato. But before we proceed, let me ask you again this question. Do you know the other type of starch and their characteristics? How about the different types of potatoes? So my objective is at the end of the session, we are going to identify and describe different types of potatoes and other starches. And we are going to prepare and present various types of potato dishes. Are you ready, kids? Now let me present to you a video about the history of potato. Baked or fried, boiled or roasted, as chips or fries. At some point in your life, you've probably eaten a potato. Delicious, for sure. But the fact is, potatoes have played a much more significant role in our history than just that of the dietary staple we have come to know and love today. Without the potato, our modern civilization might not exist at all. 8,000 years ago in South America, high atop the Andes, Ancient Peruvians were the first to cultivate the potato, containing high levels of proteins and carbohydrates, as well as essential fats, vitamins, and minerals. Potatoes were the perfect food source to fuel a large Incan working class as they built and farmed their terraced fields, mined the Rocky Mountains, and created the sophisticated civilization of the great Incan Empire. But considering how vital they were to the Incan people, when Spanish sailors returning from the Andes first brought potatoes to Europe, the spuds were duds. Europeans simply didn't want to eat what they considered dull and tasteless oddities from a strange new land, too closely related to the deadly nightshade plant, belladonna, for comfort. So instead of consuming them, they used potatoes as decorative garden plants. More than 200 years would pass before the potato caught on as a major food source throughout Europe though even then it was predominantly eaten by the lower classes. However, beginning around 1750, and thanks at least in part to the wide availability of inexpensive and nutritious potatoes, European peasants with greater food security no longer found themselves at the mercy of the regularly occurring grain famines of the time, and so their population steadily grew. As a result, the British, Dutch, and German empires rose on the backs of the growing groups of farmers, laborers, and soldiers, thus lifting the West to its place of world dominion. However, not all European countries sprouted empires. After the Irish adopted the potato, their population dramatically increased, as did their dependence on the tuber as a major food staple. But then disaster struck. From 1845 to 1852, potato blight disease ravaged the majority of Ireland's potato crop, leading to the Irish potato famine, one of the deadliest famines in world history. Over a million Irish citizens starved to death, and two million more left their homes behind. But of course, this wasn't the end for the potato. The crop eventually recovered, and Europe's population, especially the working classes, continued to increase. Aided by the influx of Irish migrants, Europe now had a large, sustainable, and well-fed population who were capable of manning the emerging factories that would bring about our modern world via the Industrial Revolution. So it's almost impossible to imagine a world without the potato. Would the Industrial Revolution ever have happened? Would World War II have been lost by the Allies without this easy-to-grow crop that fed the Allied troops? Would it even have started? When you think about it like this, many major milestones in world history can all be at least partially attributed to the simple spud from the Peruvian hilltops. Potato are a great source of starchy food and a good source of energy, fiber, vitamin B, and potassium. It is an edible tuber that is considered to be one of the most versatile foods. Potatoes are a healthy choice when boiled, baked, smashed, or roasted, with only a small amount of fat or oil and no added salt. Types of potato Number 1. New Potatoes 
These are small, immature potatoes that are harvested before their starches develop. Fingerlings are typically heirloom varieties related to the original potato which generally small, long, and finger-shaped or oblong with good flavor. Purple potatoes are blue. They have deep purple skin with bright purple flesh. The taste and texture is similar to rosette potato. Red potatoes. They have a thin red skin and crisp white, waxy flesh best suited for steaming or boiling. The rosette or burbank potatoes. This is also known as idaho potatoes which is best for baking and frying. They are long, rough, reddish-brown skin and merely flesh. And the last one is the white potatoes, which is also known as the all-purpose potato or chef potatoes. They have thin, tender skin with waxy yellow or white flesh which are best for moist heat or sauté cooking. Other starches Number 1 Sweet potatoes. They are considered to be root crops. There are also two types of sweet potatoes. The first one is the yellow flesh. They are dry and mealy. And the second one is the red sweet. They are darker, orange, moister flesh, and high in sugar. The next one is what we call yam, which is also considered to be root crops, which is less sweet than sweet potatoes. So, what can be made from potatoes? There are plenty of types of potato dishes, especially when you consider all the different types of potatoes available at the store.
So that's it for today. I hope that you learned something from my presentation. Still got any questions? If you do, please DM me to my official Facebook account, Zerika ARQ Sorel, and you may subscribe to our official YouTube account, OCP Go Teach, for more exciting video. Happy learning at home with lessons made easy by Olivarian Go Teach. One proud Olivarian.